Welcome back, percussion class. A gong is an overarching term used for any disc-shaped instrument that can range in size from one foot or less to several feet in diameter. This first one is a pitched tie gong. It is a nipple gong. Uh, you play right on that button that is the center. And it gives it a definite pitch. They can be uh, found in chromatic sets. This is the tam-tam. Most commonly you will see this in a concert band or an orchestra. You play it a little bit below center. It does not have a definite pitch. You'll see there's no raised dome or nipple. If you want to dampen, use your leg and your hand. If you're going to roll, stagger the mallets. You'll see that I'm on either side of the center, not playing in the same spot. And your roll speed does not need to be very fast. Next up is the opera gong. It's also called a glissando gong. It either glisses up or glisses down. You'll hear that this one glisses down. Here's the wind gong. Also called a feng or lion gong. It's a flat bronze disc with very little fundamental pitch, heavy overtones, a very large sustain, similar to a suspended cymbal in function. Here I'm using vibraphone mallets, like I would on a suspended cymbal. Wind chimes are typically strung in a circle with a beater on the bottom. These are made out of bamboo. They can be made out of really anything. Here is the Mark tree. It is named after Mark Stevens. This is something that he uh, invented in 1967. He was an LA studio musician. Specifically, these are solid aluminum tubes that are strung in pitch order to create a microtonal glissando. This happens to be a double row example. They can be tuned, as I said, microtonally, uh, pentatonic, diatonic, chromatic, all, all of those are common. Here is an example of key chimes. They've become pretty po popular in the concert band literature. This was designed by one of our students, Noah Runninger. Often confused with the marked tree just because of its name, this is the bell tree. This is a descending row of cup gongs. They are in descending size, but not necessarily descending in pitch. When you play them individually, you can hear this. Typically, this is played as a glissando. Here I'm using a triangle beater. You can use xylophone or bell mallets. Wood blocks are single pieces of wood, typically played by holding at eye level and striking with a rubber mallet. Composers will specify high, medium, or low, typically. It's got a pretty sharp tone. Here are the temple blocks. They're mellower in tone. They are usually played melodically. They're built in sets in pentatonic scales, usually five or six pitches. Sticks may damage the instrument. Invented by Martin Cohen in 1967, the Vibraslap was the first patent granted to the instrument manufacturing company Latin Percussion. The intent was to make a rattling donkey jawbone that would not break. Originally African in origin, carried by slaves to South America, where it was known as the Quijada. And you can get different articulations depending on how hard you grip the instrument. Developed by the Player Tone Company of New York in 1924, 
The flexitone was originally used as an effect in jazz bands in the 1920s, but is now mostly needed in rare symphonic literature and concert band. It's similar to a musical saw. Cacenturian's Piano Concerto from 1936, the second movement, is the most popular excerpt. can also be bowed.